hello to everybody who is joining us today. My name is Lydia, and I am the executive director here at Wild Goose Creative. We are in our temporary location here at the Bridge Gallery at 400 West Rich, and our um, future permanent location across the street at 188 McDowell will hopefully be open in May or April of this year, so we're really excited. Um, but we were super happy to have Avery as our December gallery artist, and she is phenomenal, and we're going to talk to her about her work and her process. You can see her, some of the show um, behind me. And we are going to have a closing reception for Avery this Friday as part of Franklinton Fridays here at 400 West Rich. So if you'd like to come, feel free to stop by. Um, we are limiting people in the gallery space at about five people at a time, just for safety reasons. And the show is legitimately almost sold out. Um, so if you want anything, you should come. <laughs> you can also check out her show live uh, on our website. So welcome, Avery. Hello. <laughs> How are you today? I'm good. I'm good. chill. <laughs> awesome. Well, yeah, let's just start and talk a little bit about your background. So how did you start um, making art and just your education, et cetera? Yeah, so um, I pr I've pretty much always been making something. Um, my parents are really encouraging of any kind of creative thing we wanted to do when I was growing up. Um, so I've always been drawing. And my mom was a tile painter like for most of her career so I'd come home and she's literally painting tiles and making money doing that so really? I, yeah no she like legitimately that was like her job forever uh she substitute teaches now too but it's like I just sort of knew that art was just a part of life <laughs> pretty much so um as I got older, I was always drawing, I always had a sketchbook, I always had something I was working on and like really curious about different types of making. So that I was never stopped from doing that. Um, apart from like teachers in school that would take my sketchbook away, but you know, <laughs> it's fine. Uh, jokes on them, I guess. But um, I, uh, uh, then when I was like deciding where to go to school and if I wanted to major in art, it was like no question that's the thing I wanted to do. Um, if I was going to spend tuition money on anything, it was going to be on something I really loved. And um, I had no reason to think that, think otherwise. So <laughs> they were very encouraging. And I was always told that I would change my major. Um, so I went to OSU for painting and drawing and I was like always told like everyone changes their major and art is fun but it's not like a real thing and I didn't I never did I started in painting and drawing and I never changed it um really yeah <laughs> never it's interesting I, I find yeah I guess I'm kind of surprised that you were in painting and drawing considering yeah. the work that the fiber work and whatnot yeah, like I said, I was like always curious in, in different types of mediums. So sewing was like kind of a like crafty, like family thing. Um, my mom liked to sew for projects around the house. She went to school for interior design. So like sewing was like, yeah, got to know how to do it. Um, so I did and it was like a hobby. Um, and like, I think when I was in school, like, it was like a fun thing I could do for like on the side. I never considered it like art, like an art practice until I was encouraged by my teachers to like actually try it and give it a shot. And it was a nice break from painting. Uh, I started to get kind of frustrated with painting and like drawing and it was nice to just try something new and it became an even better way to like express feelings and like see something actually happen that was mm -hmm. in my head and see it in real life um yeah <laughs> so you received your mfa correct a bfa your bfa and yeah. did you have to do a thesis project yes 
And <laughs> was it related to the work that is in the show now or? Yeah. So I, um, my last semester, just before my last semester of school, I went to a artist residency for undergrads in, uh, at PAPA in Philadelphia. And they, um, I was doing a lot of collage then and a lot of drawing collage and it was okay, but I think it just, the sewing on the side was more interesting. So um, when I came back to school and I had already made a bunch of sewing projects, it was like, okay, I can either keep doing collage that's not really working or do the thing that's really fun and make that my thesis because there's a lot of pressure to make something good that summarizes your experience in school. And um, I think I had a professor who was like, you really need to do something that you actually like. <laughs> so I made sculptures. I made tiny little soft sculptures of real objects and that was my thesis. Um, which is definitely not what I thought it was going to be, but the whole process was so enjoyable and I felt like I was talking a lot about feelings and um, my life and my past that I really felt like I was mm -hmm. saying something. <laughs> mm -hmm. So what would you say influences your work and you the most? Yeah. Um, I'd say I was really influenced. I worked at the Billy Ireland Cartoon Library while I was um, a student, and I was exposed to a lot of different like ways of making comics and cartoons, and also just in general art. And I feel like cartoons also really influenced my work. Um, so I always thought I was going to be an illustrator. I always thought I was going to be a drawing, painting, illustrator. Um, and that still kind of seeps into what I make. Like everything is kind of cartoony and everything's kind of um, fantastical. So I feel like that's a big influence on me. I have a lot of favorite graphic novel comic artists. Um, and obviously, Jim Henson, and a lot of puppet makers have influenced me a lot as they sort of embrace the felt and fleece world. Like, They've really influenced me to, um, I, I always thought puppets are kind of like, I was a Sesame Street kid and mm -hmm. I always thought puppets are like fun and kind of dorky and just sort of like a kid thing, but it's really art and it's really sculpture and motion and um, Jim Henson's a big influence on me. And um, also the artist, uh, Ju Young Che, uh, hmm. she makes puppets and like, a whole fantastic world of like puppets doing like talking about feelings and working through problems and she is a sculpture artist and and painting artist and like she's amazing so as soon as I saw her work it all kind of made sense it was like oh it doesn't have to be realistic to be believable and it doesn't have to like fully exist in the real world like my art can have a fantastical element and be made out of craft materials and be believable as like right. alive and i would say that um that's very true of the show fabricated magic here in all that you're saying and would you say that nature influences you as well oh yeah i spent a lot a lot of my like my favorite thing to do is go on walks and I spent a lot of time looking at nature and uh, through this year, I had a lot more time to do that. So I would take pictures of mushrooms and flowers and um, just anything that kind of sparks my interest. And um, yeah, my dad, uh, we grew up and I grew up in a house that was like in front of a pond. It's like a man-made pond, but we have a lot of nature that like lives there and so I grew up around that and like seeing a lot of geese and seeing a lot of frogs and fish and like that's kind of become a source of inspiration for me because it's like childhood memories but also like living with that around you and kind of seeking that out has been kind of healing mm -hmm. I think so it's wonderful yeah I, I just like wanted it. to I wanted to show everybody your I mean, there's lots of great work in the show, but 
just to give you an example, if you haven't seen Avery's pieces, this is the beautiful wall that we have here. Almost all of these are sold out. And is this is titled Bloom, correct? Yeah. Yeah, so yeah. that's, this is such a beautiful piece. I just like wanna buy the whole thing. <laughs> Um, and then this is her piece called Goose, which we yeah. love, obviously, here at Wild Goose. Uh, and then this one, Queen Moth. Baby Bee. And this one's called Flower Study. Just a little sample. <laughs> Yeah, I grew up with a lot of geese in my backyard, and everyone in Ohio kind of, I feel like a lot of people in Ohio think they're annoying and kind of like um, just normal and like casual, but they're like really pretty. And like, they are, and do you know that geese mate for life? Yeah, that's, see, that's lovely. Yeah, yeah, there's a lot of reasons why we're called Wild Geese Creative, yeah. um, and that's one of them. I mean, the main one is that we believe here that that art is oftentimes more about the process as opposed to the final product. And everything that we do is really centered around the process of art and art making. And it's kind of like a wild goose chase, you know? You don't really yeah. know what you're gonna end up with. But um, so tell, tell us a little bit about how your practices change over time. Um, I know you have a formal painting and drawing background, but how do you see your style changing and do you see it kind of going in a different direction and do you want to stay with this direction? Yeah I um I think when I like I think I've always thought that it had to like art had to look like something and it had to be precise and I really liked painting portraits and I really liked watercolor painting and I liked I think there's a lot of pressure on painting and drawing uh people who paint and draw to be realistic and to be kind of like uh, subjective. And I think that's fine and great and beautiful, but I, I, think, I think over time I've started to kind of loosen up and um, sort of working with craft material specifically has made me like embraced it's made me embrace the kind of like imperfectness. Like it's not going to look exactly like a beetle, but if you can give the impression of a beetle, that's almost more interesting. And to get super sucked into details, but have it be like basic enough that it's like, you get the idea, but it's not 100% accurate. That's almost more interesting. And I think I've gotten a lot looser over time um, and I'm really interested in intrinsic details of things. So it's kind of a trade-off. It's like, what out of a, what of a flower is important? Is it like this tiny details or is it like the main thing? Like what's more exciting? I think when I started making a lot of work that was about nature, I got very anxious about leaves. <laughs> Cause it's like, they're just green and they're like a shape like this. And like, there's like, you know, I got sucked up in those details that it um, freaked me out and made me think that um, um, it was too boring to pursue. So then mm -hmm. I think I had like an epiphany that like, uh, it's not about the leaves as much as it is about the actual head of the flower. <laughs> like that's the interesting part. Everything else will make sense if you focus on that part. Um, I don't know if that makes sense. But, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I think the best art is art that you know there's tension there in mm -hmm. terms of it not being entirely accurate in its representation of something but that you know makes you think and that you can't copy necessarily and I think right. you do such a wonderful job of that um, in your pieces and I also love how you have a combination it does feel very like magical uh, mm -hmm the title of the show is Fabricated Magic. And it's cool because you have like these nature elements in the show, but you also have like actual kind of um, 
like swords and iconography and stuff that has sort of that type of feel to it and combined together I think is really interesting. Yeah yeah I think yeah there's something with um I forget what it's called it's like synthetic magic or something like that like very similar to the title of my show so I'm <laughs> feeling something but uh, it's like when you make something that's close enough to the thing that it feels real uh, kind of like cave paintings kind of mm. like feels real but it's not there I was like really like that cool um like an optical illusion um and I think like I watched a lot of stop motion as a kid and that kind of um like it's all not the thing but you believe that they're alive and I like things that feel like they're alive like especially with puppets because you make them look alive yeah. but you can just stand there and look like it's breathing like that's pretty interesting to me that's so cool I have been um, a collector of Avery's for a few years now and I just I love it because you know it's just something that it is easy to view like to have in your in your house in your home so I think from that perspective it's really great but at the same time it is still so like artistic and contemporary and um and all of that so I'm yeah. so excited that you had a solo show here so talk a little bit about um this year and COVID I I like to ask all of the artists that we work with how COVID has affected them and their creative process and sort of just talk a little bit about that. Yeah, um, so I was working at uh, two museums at the beginning of the year, and uh, we shut down in March, <laughs> and it was like, oh, I have all this time to work, um, like, upside, lots of time to work, lots of time in the studio, downside, it's a global pandemic, so it really felt like I was like, okay, so I just, I'm just gonna work and I'm, I'm kind of stressed about what's happening. And um, it's just really hard because it's like, you wanna go and do the thing that makes you feel good and makes you feel like you're doing something and is your passion. Um, but at the same time, I really wanted to scroll on Twitter all day and just like absorb everything that's happening and try to like, if I think about it enough, I'll fix it. But that's just like the anxiety <laughs> brain talking. Um, and I think a lot of people felt that way where it's like everything is stuck still and everything is like a doomsday feeling. Um, and that was, it's really hard and it feels silly to make art at a time where everything is so like terrifying and, and hard. Um, but at the same time, I know a lot of people who made art through this year and felt like it it helped a lot mm -hmm. and it did help me eventually I like learned that um this was a way to control what was happening in my life and a way to like focus my energy on something healing um and something about my feelings um so it, it's just a weird like balance <laughs> of like freaking out but also trying to find calmness um, and I ended up moving home halfway through the year, which was kind of nice uh, to be around my family, um, which really helped. Um, I have to work in my bedroom now, but it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of nice though. I got like a 24 seven studio, so that's all right. Um, but it's like, it was, it's, it's still been like, to like trying to compartmentalize between the outside world and personal inside art world um and sometimes those things kind of interconnect mm -hmm. so. right yeah exactly yeah that's really interesting um a lot of artists i've talked to have said that it's just been nice to have something to work towards whether that be a show or some sort of collaborative thing and um you know at, at wild goose we want to try and continue offering those opportunities as much as we can even though a lot of it is virtual um but i'm certainly excited for 2021 and being back in person um yeah it's been very obviously challenging for anyone involved in the creative uh realm in columbus and everywhere so 
how would you describe Columbus and the creative scene here? And, and what do you find to be rewarding, challenging, all of that? Um, I, I guess I would, I think I've like grown up around Columbus my whole life and kind of like in and out of the art scene, like going to arts festivals as a kid and like, um, I would say it's like growing. It feels like it's grown so much. It feels like it's like, um, I feel like a lot of it is trying to reach artists at every level, at every type of art making, um, which is great. I feel like there's people who are like crafters. Like I feel like I fit into a category of craft and fine art and contemporary art. So it's kind of a bit of everything. Um, which is really great and that like strong sense of community is helpful to feel like you have people watching if people who care about your work and you know not everybody's gonna like everything you make but it's like really nice to feel like there's like that community um and it's yeah <laughs> I feel like Columbus is really like a good definition of community um and definitely, I agree. <laughs> yeah. I agree. Do you see yourself staying here for a while, or do you have hopes to go somewhere else? Um, it kind of depends. I know we're kind of planning a move. Um, my partner is um, kind of getting a job in another state, so I might be moving soon. <laughs> I'd love to come back if we can. Um, I would really like to stick around Columbus. I mean, my family's here, my friends are here, so I will definitely come back as much as I can. <laughs> yeah, that's great. We, we certainly miss you. Miss you. Yeah. <laughs> um, so last question, what do you think would be like your dream project or what do you see as kind of like, what would you love to do? So I would say my dream job is to work for the Muppets. Oh my god, that's amazing. <laughs> like, you would be so good. <laughs> yeah, like, I don't mind if it's just like I brush the fur. Like, <laughs> be around them. And like, they had the Jim Henson exhibit at COSI last summer. And I put a little, my first puppet was in their like little gallery outside in the hall. So like, my puppet was here in the hallway. And then like, maybe 20 feet was Kermit the Frog. So it's like so close yet so far away. <laughs> oh, that's so funny. <laughs> and they're both in glass cases, so that she, she, they don't see each other. But you know, it's like that exhibit was really cool. And like, uh, just always, I was a Sesame Street kid and a Muppet person, and I really like the Muppets. <laughs> I just want to work with them. That's amazing. Where are they based out of? I'm not really New sure. New York or LA? Uh, it was a show with the um, Museum of moving images I think that's what it's called okay so it was like a traveling exhibit um and they had like a bit of it in Kosai um so they go to like different children's museums but um yeah I think they're also in Burbank California like Jim oh, okay California, yeah California but like that would be a dream <laughs> that's amazing um I think that you would be an incredible asset <laughs> to the Muppets <laughs> So are they still like baking stuff? Yeah. Oh yeah. I think they're still like, I think they just released, uh, they had like a show on Netflix that came out last year. I haven't watched it yet, but yeah. And like the Muppets movies and they're always making sequels and like they're, the Muppets are alive and well, I think. <laughs> That's so cool. I wonder, I mean, in terms of getting a job there, it, it probably, see, it just seems like such a specialized thing, you know, that you'd have to yeah. They probably don't have an apply here on their website, but <laughs> if you, I mean, if, if they came and saw your show here, they'd be like, you're hired. <laughs> I'm, yeah, I'm a, yeah, any kind of puppet making uh, movie, I would love to be a part That's of any so kind cool. of movie, something. That's so cool. <laughs> well, thank you so much for taking the time today, Avery. I love talking with you and... Um, this show is phenomenal, so last time you can see it is this Friday, January 8th, and there's also some other uh, things going on here at 400 with open artist studios and things like that. So um, Avery, how can people get in touch with you and connect with you? Yeah, so um, I'm on Instagram at Avery McGrail Art. Um, that's basically my main platform. I have a website. It's not super good. I'll, I'll get <laughs> another website and I'll put it on Instagram. <laughs>
Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Avery, and yeah, looking forward to talking with you soon. Yeah. Thank you. Bye. <laughs>